Um, hello there, and welcome to this class presented to you by O3 Schools Jam App. Now, um, O3 Schools Jam App is simply an application which helps you prepare for your jam. How does it do so? It gives you a platform to actually take this exam in much the same manner as you would see when you are taking your jam on the actual day. So with the software, you are actually able to see the format it switch jam actually displays your questions. So you can try to look for you can try and learn how to change from subject to subject, to switch questions, to know when you've answered one and when you've no answered, to know where the calculator is, how to use it. All these are more features, just as they are available on the day of jam, are also available within your O3 Schools Jam app. That's part of the beautiful features which the O3 Schools Jam app has. And um also this other school jam app could even be set and modified to suit your needs. For example, you could take the exam in just one subject if you so desire. You could even regulate the number of questions. You want to answer all 14 mathematics right now. You can answer just 20 and adjust the time as required. So you're probably able to tackle each subject as you want. It is very, very flexible. So everyone can set it in much the same manner as they want. You don't have to set it in anybody else's manner. But you can also set it in just the same way Jam does it. So you can try to see how you are expecting yourself to perform on that actual day. You can see the software, you can know how to navigate the software and things like that. You learn these as you practice. There's also the question search feature in which you can even search for questions by topic. Just choose the subject and choose that topic by typing it in and it will bring out questions related to that topic for you to answer. So as you read a particular topic, you can open your app, answer questions related to that topic and then proceed to the next topic. Being sure that you have learned this topic and you are actually able to answer Jam's questions on that, that topic. So your three schools app has a lot of functionalities. And to get complete access to these functionalities, you have to activate your app. The activation key costs just 2,500 Naira. An extremely small amount, if you ask me, because if you are able to go out and go and get your past questions, you know, in hard copy, you will spend more than this amount of money purchasing your past questions for your four subjects. But your auto school's jump app with just this amount, you get access to all subjects, not just for no. You can get access to all subjects on the O3 Schools Jam app. And furthermore, you are also able to use the software to learn and see how you are going to perform on the actual day of your jam. So the O3 Schools Jam app, it helps. We have we've had testimony from past users and it would actually be great. You get it, activate your app 2005. There are different ways of payment. Um, you can pay to transfer with your ATM card, whatever works best for you. Get it, activate it. And after your jam, I believe you too will give your testimony. So that is the O3 Schools Jam Bar. Please do get it. And with that, we'll move on. In this class, we shall be looking at measuration. And the measuration in this class, we are focusing on volume this is because measuration can be studied in so many different aspects you could be looking at the lengths you could be looking at the areas you could be looking at several things but for now we are focusing on just the volume now please take notes only solid shapes can have volumes that means um things like rectangles and squares and circles these do not have volume those are plain shapes. They are two-dimensional. They cannot contain anything. They have no volume. But your three-dimensional shapes, your cylinders, your cube, your cube bones, these can all have volumes. So it's those volumes we want to learn how to calculate. Now, the calculation is really, very really easy. All you have to do is know the right formula and make sure you know how to interpret your question when you see it. Let's start with the simplest shape, your cube. But before we even go here, let's get the general formula down, please. For volume, 
the general formula is base area times perpendicular height. So the base area of the shape times its perpendicular height will always give you the volume. However, in some cases, perpendicular height is not easy to get. So we might simply have a small straight formula get the volume. So let's see. For a cube, a cube is a three-dimensional shape in which all sides and all faces are equal. So for a cube, the volume equals L cube. Very, very straightforward. That's it for a cube, L cube. Then for a cube board, a cube board is like a cube, but in its case, all sides are not equal. So it now has different lengths, breadth, and height. And therefore, the volume is L, B, H. Very, very simple. Next up, we have a cylinder. A cylinder. Now, as you know, a cylinder, cylinder is kind of like a bucket. Your typical paint bucket, I believe, is cylindrical. Something like this, though you may want to draw it like this. So for a cylinder, your base area is a circle. So that means pi r squared, then times the height, h. Very, very simple. Next up, we can have um, your triangular glass prism. Oh, sorry, does it have to be a triangular glass prism? Your prism, generally. Now, for prisms, we don't have any special formula. We can simply say volume, no special formula. We use this general formula for prism, base area times height. So if you can find the area of any base and then the perpendicular height from that base to the top, you have your area. Um, your prism looks something like this. For those of us who are not sure what it looks like, Imagine having a triangle on the two faces. So let's see a broken line here, broken line here, broken line here. So something like this, see? So we have three rectangles, one, bottom two, left side three. Then triangles at this end and this end. This is a triangular prism. So the no special formula means we simply find, we can find the area of this base times perpendicular height. Or we could find the area of this base times perpendicular height. It doesn't really matter. We use that formula. Next up, let's look at a sphere. For a sphere, a sphere is like a football. The volume is 4 over 3 pi arrow cube. Very simple and straightforward. R is the volume. Then we also have what is called a hemisphere. For a hemisphere, hemisphere is basically like half a sphere. A football cuts into two equal parts. That means you're going to be using half of this. The volume is now 2 over 3 pi arrow cube. See? Then um, we also have a pyramid. I believe we should have seen a picture of pyramids. It is very, very popular for them. So pyramids kind of like have it a square or rectangular base, then triangles on the four sides. So um, a diagram is not going to be very, very beautiful, but something like this. That like this guy has the internal part and you have this going there. So we have one triangle facing out or that triangle this way, a third triangle facing inwards, a fourth one that way, and then you have your base. Now for a pyramid, pyramid looks like a keyboard, which has kind of been broken. So we can see the formula is one over three L B H. And just like a pyramid formula, we also have a cone. And a cone is kind of like a truncated cylinder, kind of like sliced off at the sides. And in its case, its formula is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. So, when dealing with volume of shapes, this is what you need to know. The simple formula 
to calculate their volumes. So if you are given a question, note the shape, note the formula, and the solving becomes very, very easy. As evidence, we are going to open our O3 Screws Jamba app right now and try to solve several of them. It's very, very easy. So let's just get my phone here. Um, opening our app, yes. Let's start off by solving one from the year 2018. 2018, model three, question number 35. 2018, model three, question 35. This one says, a sphere is to be constructed by melting a cylinder of height 10 cm. Let's call it height of cylinder. I'm using C for cylinder is 10 cm. So we want to get a sphere by melting the cylinder. If the manufacturer intends to have a sphere of equal radius as the cylinder, wants to make sure the radius of the sphere creates also the radius of the cylinder he melted. Calculate the radius and volume of the sphere. Now, when I'm melting something and recasting it, I'm not adding any material. Think about it like um, you've seen videos of where they make swords in movies or jewelry. You melt the metal and then you recast this metal into a new shape. However, if I'm melting you or you're melting the material and recasting it, I'm neither adding nor removing anything. Therefore, consider the fact that density is the same, its mass is the same, its volume should be the same. That means its size should not be changing. If I melt a 10 liter bucket and I recast it into any shape I like, I should still be getting a 10 liters material, no matter what I cast it into, as long as I did not throw any part of it away. That must mean, quite simply, that the volume of the cylinder equals the volume of the sphere which was created. That's all. The cylinder and the sphere should have equal volume. And if this is true, there was a for volume of a cylinder that we should have memorized. That is pi r squared h. And the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now, if I look at this, some things can cancel out already. Pi takes care of pi. Then I can divide both sides by r squared over r squared over r squared. This cancels this, and we have to do h equals 4 over 3. r squared will cancel this cube, giving me with just r. And this height is the height of the cylinder. Therefore, hc is going to be 10 centimeters equals to 4 over 3 times r, which I want to find. So over 1, cross multiply. 3 times 10 is 30. So 4R equals 30 over 4 over 4. And that must be 7.5 centimeters. Now, if I look at my app, all my options for radius are 7.5 centimeters. That means I did not even have to solve for this part. I could have just guessed it because it was obviously correct. However, if I had solved, or rather, if I had solved this, and got 7.5 cm. Then when I look at my options, only one option is having radius at 7.5 cm. Then automatically, I would have known that that option must be my correct answer, and there's no reason to continue solving. However, in the case of this question, what I should have known or did use this, without solving, I already know that the radius must be 7.5 cm, because that is what is in all my options uniformly. Therefore, I should not have even bothered doing this. They've already told me from the question. I should have simply then said that volume of sphere equals 4 over 3 pi r cube. And that should be 4 over 3. We're not told us to take pi as. So we can use 22 over 7 times r cube. That's uh, 7.5 cube. Which we know is 7.5 times 7.5 times 7.5. So what I have to simply do is open my calculator and put these numbers in. So that's 4 over 3. 
um, 4 divided by 3, yes, times 22 divided by 7, times 7.5 in 3 places. And what that would give me is 1767.857 centimeters cubed. However, when I solve this, I realized this is not in my options, right? So I took a look at my options clearly and I realized all my options are actually in terms of pi. That means they did not use 22 over 7 in their solving. Instead, they just left it as pi. So there's no reason for me to put in the actual value of pi. I ought to simply just solve it like that. So I should actually be solving without pi. So if I then correct it in my calculator, I can find out that my answer will be 562.5 pi centimeters cubed. And looking at my O3 schools jamba, yes, that is question D. So you see, this is how you solve and this is how you make sure you avoid mistakes. In this case, previously, I knew I did not know pi, so I put in 22 over 7, which is a constant. But when I did that and I did not see my answer, I checked my options and realized all my options were in terms of pi. That means I should leave pi as it is without putting in 22 over 7. So on doing that, I easily got my answer. Okay, so is that simple? Let's move on and try some other questions on volume. Okay, for question two, this one is from 2018 model one, question number eight. 2018 model one, question eight. It says the volume of a cone of radius 6 cm, radius is 6 cm, is 396 centimeter cube. Volume is 396 centimeter cube. We are then told find the height. The volume of a cone of radius 6 cm is 396 cm cube. Find the height. Again, this topic is very simple. You simply have to recall the formula. And we should know the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. If you do not know your formula, you will not get your answer. So, my volume is um, 396. This would be 1 over 3. Now, if I look at my options this time, to be careful, I realize, okay, my options are without pi. That must mean they put in the value of pi. And I can use 22 over 7, or if you also like, 3.14. Anyone can walk. Then R is 6, that's 6 squared times H. All right, let's simply, let's multiply the numerators first. This will be 22 times 6 squared. That's 22 times 6 times 6, which is 792H. All over 3 times 7 is 21. Then um, I have different ways to proceed from here. I could simply say 396 equals to 792 over 21. And that will give me 37.714. To eight, let's approximate it to three h, and therefore, how do I get h by dividing both sides by this number? So this cancels this, and three nine six divided by thirty seven point seven one four three is ten point four nine nine nine, which we know must be ten point five centimeters and if i open my auto is close jump up yes that is option c so you see the solvents are simple just know your formula and you can tackle the question let's move on now to the year 2017 model 2 question 28 2017 model 2 question 28 this one says, when a spherical ball was inserted into a cylinder containing 1,200 centimeter cube of water, 
let's see so volume of water let's call that vw was 1200 centimeter cube now when it was inserted into this the water level rose to so let's call this volume of water initially vw1 and volume of water two which is the final one it rose to 2124 centimeters cube we have to calculate the radius of this sphere now this might seem a bit tricky but you simply have to know once you insert any object into the container of water the container of water will always rise and that rise is because the volume of that object is being added to the volume of the water that means if the volume of water was say 100 and when i added this the volume of water then became one let's say 500 that must mean that that extra 400 being added came from the object so to get the volume of the object to be 500 minus 100 which is 400. now in this case here to get the volume of my sphere to be the final volume of water minus the initial volume of water which is going to be 2124 minus 1200 and um to press that in my calculator 2124 minus 1200 is 924 cm cube so i know that the volume of the sphere should be 924 however they're asking me for the radius not the volume all i have to recall is that the volume equals to 4 over 3 pi arrow cube I'm using S to indicate I'm dealing with this sphere. So my volume is going to be 924 equals to 4 over 3. Now, if I look at my options again to know if I'm solving in terms of pi, the options are without pi. So I could use 22 over 7, but for variation, let's use 3.14. Either way, this is also pi times arrow S cube. So let's just multiply and divide everything we have there. 9 to 4 equals 2. So now back to our calculator. We have 4 times 3.14 divided by 3. That would be 4.18667 ROS cube. Now this is CCCC for infinity. So we approximate. Then we, to make ROS stand alone, we divide both sides by this number such that arrow s cube will be equal to uh, this is 924 divided by 4.18667 that's 220.7 let's just finish it up here therefore we're having now that arrow s cube equals 220.7 now, how to find ROS, not ROS cube? So, how do I get rid of this cube here? It is simple. By taking the cube root of both sides. Cube cancels cube root. ROS equals. Now, we have a tiny issue. We cannot find cube root with our jump calculator. So, what can we do? The easiest way to answer this question is with the process of elimination. If I cannot find cube roots, I know I can find cube to be multiplied by itself twice. It times itself times itself. So I'll simply go to my options and say, let's test this. Option A is 5.2. So I try 5.2 times 5.2 times 5.2. That is 140. Not my answer. Next up, option B is 7.0. So I can say 7 times 7 times 7 that is 343 to be not my answer option c is 6.04 so i say 6.04 times 6.04 times 6.04 and as you can see what that gives me is 220.3 which is the closest and therefore i can say arrow s must be 6.04 Zero four centimeters. So you see, 
despite the fact that I could not find cube to my calculator, by elimination, I was able to tell what the cube root should be. So do not get to that point and panic and say, well, there's no way to solve this without calculator. No, you can simply do that. Okay. Moving on. Our next question will come from the year 2014, question 30. This is question 4. 2014 question 30. A cylindrical tank has a capacity, and please note that capacity and volume are the same thing. So a capacity of 6160 meter cube. What is the depth of the tank if the radius of its base, the radius is 28 meters, and you were told specifically that pi equals to 20 over 7. So I want to find the depth. The depth is the same thing as the height. So what can we do? Well, we know that volume equals pi r squared h for a cylinder. Therefore, if I'm finding h, I should simply say volume 6160 cos pi, as I was told, 22 over 7. R squared is 28 squared. I can write it as 28 times 28 h. I know this 7 year 1, 7 to 28 is 4. So 6160 must be, simply multiply these numbers, 22 times 4 times 28. That will be 2464H. And therefore, to get H over 2464, over 2464. H must be equal to 2464. That gives you 2.5 meters. And going back to my old risk question, jump up. Yes, that is option B. So I hope we have seen the method. That there's nothing to fear within these questions. They are all very, very simple. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at a very, very simple question. This time from 2011, and this is question 30. 2011, question 30. A solid metal cube of size 3 cm is placed in a rectangular tank of dimensions 3, 4, and 5 cm. What volume of water can the tank now hold? So I have a cube. Let me call this LC. Length of cube equals to 3 cm. This is the length of the cube. Then the volume of this cube must be LC cube, which is 3 cube, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Okay, now this cube was placed inside a tank, and as you are aware, anytime you put any object into a tank, it occupies a volume of that tank. In this case, it is going to occupy a volume of 27 cm cube. The question is, what volume of water can a tank now hold? So with this guarantee taking 27 cm cube, what can be added to that tank? Now the tank itself has dimensions of the length of the tank is 3 cm, the breadth is 4 cm, and the height is 5 cm. This might not have been indicated, but we're told it has dimensions 3, 4, 5. So we took it as length, breadth, and height. Therefore, the volume of this tank must be LT, BT, HT. LT is 3, BT is 4, HT is 5. 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60. That therefore means that if this guy has taken 27 cm cube, and this tank had 60 cm cube to offer, then the extra remaining must be VT minus VC. 60 minus 27, which is 33 cm cube. And that is option B. So I do hope we're understanding how this works because it is actually this simple, nothing more complicated than this. However, we shall try one last question. 
to ensure complete understanding of the topic at hand. So for this question, we are going all the way to the year 2002 and looking at question 40. And this question comes with a diagram. And we are told in that in the diagram, a cylinder is surmounted by a hemispherical bowl. We have to find the volume of the solid. Now, it looks something like this. I'm drawing it simply so I can explain it better. And we're told that from here to here is 3 cm. And that from here to here, down is 20 cm. That means I know the height of the cylinder, but I don't seem to know the radius, do I? However, one thing that must be clear is for this hemisphere to fit perfectly on top of my cylinder, they must have the same radius. If not, it will not fit, it will overlap or be too small. So for it to fit as perfectly as the diagram illustrates, they must have the same radius. And what is the radius of the hemisphere? The radius of the hemisphere is this 3cm. That means the radius of my hemisphere is 3, and the radius of my cylinder must also be 3. And since both of them are being combined, then my total volume must be volume of sphere plus volume of cylinder. That has been to be my method. Now, the formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3. But please, no, this is not a sphere. This is a hemisphere. This is half of the sphere. So let's not make that mistake. This is a hemisphere. So in a hemisphere, this is actually 2 over 3, not 4 over 3. Pi arrow cube. And for the cylinder, it is pi arrow squared h. So to solve, this becomes 2 over 3. Now if you look at your options, you notice they are all in terms of pi. That means I don't have to put in any number for pi. I can split it as pi times radius cube. That's going to be 3 cube. Plus pi again, radius squared is going to be 3 squared times the height, which is 20. So in this case, 3 year 1, 3 into 3 cube becomes 3 squared. So 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So 18 pi plus over this way, 3 squared is also 9. 9 times 20 is 180. So this is 180 pi. Therefore, 18 pi plus 180 pi is going to be 198 pi centimeters cube. And this is the volume of my combination so if you have any shape that's a combination of more than one to get the total volume simply add the volume of the shapes that make up the whole you see very very easy so i'll stop here and i'm going to give you some questions to try your hand on and additionally you can find more questions within the application and also try to solve them um, but before I do, I just noticed one question that is different from any we have solved. But I think we should give that a go before we stop. So let's just take one more. This one seems quite fun. This is from 1997, question 42. It is a prism. And um, let's just draw the diagram so I can all look at it. Well, so the yeah, looks like this. Then there's this, this, and um, this. Then it goes up. And then um something like this. So we also have the broken lines indicating the internal part. And we are told that this and these are 90 degrees. So here is 11 cm. Here is 10 cm. This is 5 cm. And this is 8 cm. So let's see what we have, shall we? Now, this is a prism, but instead of the common one, which is the triangular prism, this is having a trapezium here. But that doesn't change it. The formula for volume 
is always Bezerra times perpendicular height. So how do I find my base area? In this question, actually, I could use these components as my base, and this would be my height, because it doesn't really matter, I could stand it up. So area, base, height. How can I solve? Area of base, and since this is a trapezium, we should know that the formula for area of trapezium is 1 over 2, A plus B, H. And that should give me 1 over 2. Now, A and B are the parallel sides, meaning 8 and 10. So, 8 plus 10. Y, H is the vertical height, which is 5. So, 1 over 2. 8 plus 10 is 18 times 5. 2 into 18 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45 cm squared. And here we are almost done. We can therefore see that the volume must be base area times perpendicular height. Remember, we said this one doesn't have any special formula. You adapt as the question requires. My base area is 45 cm squared, and my height is now going from here to the ending, which is 11. So if I multiply this with my calculator, that gives me 45. Sorry, because it is 45 times 11, giving me 495 centimeters cube. And I look at my options. Yes, that is option D. So you see, for this one, we would have a special formula adapt as required. There's nothing scary about it. You should be able to solve it. And now, this is time for the assignment as usual in mathematics classes. So you can solve this and comment your answer under the video. And um, we shall respond there to, we shall tell you if it's correct or not. If it's not correct, we shall try and give you the steps you should take to get the answer. So in your all three schools jump up, the questions could be from 2001, you can attempt question 29 um from 2002 question 43 also from 2007 take a look at question 42 then um from 2008 take a look at question number 30 so do try your hands on these questions and do well to comment your answers so we can help you verify if they are right or wrong. Look forward to hearing from you. And um, you can subscribe to this channel to watch more videos on tutorials ranging from different subjects and different topics within those subjects. Also do well to like this video, get your three schools jump app and activate it. And thank you very much for watching. My name is Athanasius. Thank you again.